But I want to get the ball rolling by just asking Kathy the most basic of questions, which is also the most obvious of questions and maybe the most difficult of questions, which is just to ask her to think a little bit about what is it that has drawn you to Pasolini so insistently and consistently across your career, given that you've made two films that put you in dialogue with his work. Um, I'm interested in what, um, why he matters to you as a filmmaker, why he matters to you as a feminist, potentially, why he matters to you as a queer feminist filmmaker. Um, you don't have to answer all those things at once, but if God. you could sort of begin to talk about that initial um, connection between your own uh, poetic and artistic practice and Pasolini's. Um, well, the first thing that drew me to Pasolini was in fact not his films, but his writing. Uh, I saw a documentary, which I don't really remember the name of, but it was in 2002. And he was being interviewed and he said uh, he was working on a novel called Petrolio. And that was immediately inviting to me because I wanted to understand why he would be making a film about oil, a book about oil. So I got the book, which is like this thick. And I think like the middle 40 pages include <coughs> as many blowjobs for boys in the hills outside of Rome. So an intriguing, fragmentary, and unfinished text, um, which just made me want, I first thought I was going to adapt Petrolio, and I soon saw how <laughs> ridiculous that was going to be, um, because it's massive and it's, you know, it's insane. So uh, instead, I just started, to, I continued to read him, and, uh, I was fascinated by the the Divine Mimesis, which was uh, a text that he was published, I think, in the month of his murder in November. Was that? Maybe like the tenth of October. Yeah, uh, it was. Was he intending that to be a prologue to Petrolio in some way? Was it meant to have any? In any event, it was absolutely in dialogue with Dante. Um, in the in. in Inferno, and uh, and so I I I sort of sort of got permission to follow him in the same way that he followed Dante, who followed Virgil, who I mean the fact that there's a woman in the caboose, okay, we can talk about that, but there I am following this line of Italian men, okay, <laughs> that's fine, um, and so I went to Rome in 2006 where I met you, by well, not by chance, but through a mutual friend of ours who was conducting uh, a workshop for modern dance in Rome that summer through Cornell University. And, and I was just going to try to find the locations of Pasolini's Roman films myself, not speaking any Italian, being totally a stranger. And I think this, to this came up as a topic in terms of strategy um, for me, as a filmmaker, I'm, I'm, I like to think of myself more as a gatherer than a hunter, in that I don't, I don't necessarily set out to capture something that I know of in advance, but I go into the world with my sp hand sprung wound Bolex camera, which is very loud and very odd looking, and only shoots 24 seconds before the motor dies. So I'm, I'm um, hemmed in by my tools, which I enjoy the freedom of the inherent fragmentary capture or discovery of things and also just always knowing that I will always miss something, always. I, and it's impossible to gather everything um, in the frame. So that's all, I went uh, and, and then was touring around. You, as a matter of fact, were taking Byron and his students around to various Roman film locations, and I was like, so lucky, because now you'd done all that work. <laughs> so you made my life very easy. Um, anyway, in the film, there's, there's elements where I even coerced the course. I invited the dancers to reinterpret some of the scenes with the thieves that end uh, Pasolini's first film, Akatone, um, which I was very interested in. Um, revisiting 
uh, especially since that site is still pretty much intact. It's this corner in Testaccio and, and, and then along the quay. 